Recently, someone asked me to summarize all of my work in one word at the end of a show, and I said nature. And then I had to qualify that with, I don't mean, you know, a tree or a picture of the countryside or whatever. I mean nature in the sense of the systems that we exist in. Life and living form is definitely part of that, but there are other things, the foundations of nature from science and from philosophy. Anything that can be visualized that relates to natural systems is often beautiful. Nature is often built on beautifully artistic ideas, things which don't quite make sense and have some subtle trickery. A lot of science often seems like art. And that's, the, for me, that, that's the most exciting areas of science and a lot of the most beautiful arts whenever you get that intersection of the two. Seme is using that same idea, linking foundational aesthetics from sciences with those of Italian culture. So from Italian architecture, religion, design, music, I'm linking those together with the more science foundational aesthetics from my previous projects. So that's why the project's called Seme meaning seed in Italian. Seeds from science to the seeds from the arts and, and music. So I've gone back to ancient Italian music, you know, from the 1500s. Beautiful. You know, worship music, essentially. It's Catholic music that I've repurposed into my world. Scarlatti, Verdi, and then I've also been delving into you know, visual ideas. Famous Fibonacci sequence, Cardano circles, painting, frescoes, religious iconography, all the sorts of things that we associate with Italy historically. I've been trying to integrate them into the live performance. In Mozart's day, composers were limited by instruments, voices, physical systems for making music with. But now we have synthesizers and computers and this infinitude of sound design possibility, which has opened up timbral worlds that just were inaccessible in the past. And as a result, whole genres are focused on timbre, how music sounds, not what melody it's playing and what rhythm it's playing, but the textural sound quality of uh, an instrument. Ultimately, I try to make the best I can with every musical element, including speciality, which is another one that's often ignored, but another musical tool, another musical element that you can communicate emotions with and deliver an experience with. Mm -hmm. 
One of my main discoveries during the Semi project where I was tasked with making music based on Italian heritage, Italian culture, was the discovery of Palestrina, which is a composer from the 1500s who made church music, choral, harmony, based, beautiful, polyphonic church music. And maybe I shouldn't be surprised, there's definitely some connection between some of the ideas that they were looking for and some of the ideas that I tried to put into my music. It's been a really amazing process going back to those original scores and then reworking them with synthesizers and with the singers Kim Sheehan and Sarah Aristodou and with the cellist Neil Zarenz, Quake Bass, the drummer um, and Tom Hodge, the pianist. We've been working together to rescore and reimagine these ancient pieces of music and the results have been really beautiful. Essentially I've got my bedroom full of synthesizers and suddenly I'm getting dropped into one of the most famous classical concert halls in the world, feeling a bit of imposter syndrome. But then also I think um, electronic music is as rich with culture and ideas as any other form of music. I just relied on that feeling that, okay, I'm gonna delve into the themes of Italy and see what I find, express myself as I always do. The Barbican is probably my favourite concert hall in the world. I've been there for some of my most informative musical experiences. So it's an exciting prospect to get to work with them again and try something new again and push things forward and experiment and take risks and see what sort of mad experience we can create for the audience.